Royalty is a combination of myth and reality. Gold coaches, fairy tale princesses, and palaces seem like far off legends for many. For others, it's all part of living history. With the Queen celebrating her Platinum Jubilee this year, it can be hard for those of us who aren't British to make sense of royalty and all of the sites in London associated with the royal family. There are 10 royal palaces scattered throughout London, but I've narrowed down the list so that you can have more time sipping tea all right. yeah, it's quite fragrant. or having a pint to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee. In 2022, it will have been 70 years since Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II was proclaimed undoubted Queen of her Kingdom and subsequently crowned. While the official Platinum Jubilee celebrations will take place in London, it's an international affair since Her Majesty is Queen and Head of State to a total of 15 nations across the globe that make up the Commonwealth. This epic milestone further reminds the world that the Queen is a shining example of service and duty to her country with the utmost dignity. The Platinum Jubilee of 2022 will be the first in history, and you will no doubt want to know more about the Queen, the Royal Family, and their history. I'm Angel Castellanos for The Tour Guide. Pretty excited to be back here. I've lived in London, I'm a history geek, and have visited these places many times. Before we get started, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe so we can keep bringing you great content. We've also made things easy by listing great tours of London in the description below. Here are the royal palaces in London you should know about if you're celebrating the Queen's Platinum Jubilee or just visiting London during this special time. Windsor Castle It's hard to overstate how important Windsor Castle is to Britain. It has been the seat of the British monarchy for almost a thousand years and is the oldest inhabited castle in the world. The 11th century castle has been an official residence to 39 monarchs since King Henry I in 1110. Positioned 23 miles west of London, or a day's march from the Tower of London, William the Conqueror built Windsor Castle shortly after his invasion in 1066 as a strategic military position overlooking the Thames Valley defending the West. Today, the location on the Thames is stunning and surrounded by acres of beautiful parkland. It takes about an hour to get to Windsor from central London. I would recommend planning to spend the whole morning at Windsor to see it without rushing. For more on tickets, transportation, and planning information, see the links in the description below. Remember, you don't have to be into the royal family in order to appreciate Windsor Castle. If you want to get more out of your visit and hear fun stories that are interesting, join one of our small group tours of London that includes Windsor. The ancient fortress protected Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II as a child during World War II, and she was also recently quarantined at Windsor during the pandemic. It's also home to the highest order of chivalry in England, the most noble order of the Garter. Recently, during the pandemic, Windsor Castle has been used more by Her Majesty the Queen for state occasions like Trooping of the Color and welcoming heads of foreign state. The stunning St. George's Chapel dominates the lower ward. The changing of the guard takes place in the courtyard of the lower ward next to the chapel. The 45-minute ceremony has taken place at Windsor since 1660. To keep it real, St. George's Chapel is the heart and soul of Windsor Castle. Architecturally, the chapel is one of the finest examples of Gothic perpendicular in England. The chapel's construction we see today began in 1475, and King Henry VII later added the famous vaulted ceilings. The Palace of Westminster. St. Edward the Confessor, the last of the Anglo-Saxon kings, built the Palace of Westminster in 1045 to oversee the construction of Westminster Abbey. 
it became the primary residence of the medieval kings of England for the next 500 years. In 1512, just after King Henry VIII came to the throne, a fire gutted the royal residential area of the palace. So in 1529, Henry abandoned Westminster completely, having acquired a more spacious palace nearby. This palace is better known as Whitehall. The ruins of the old royal palace were demolished and removed, thus ending the almost 500 years of royal residence. Westminster became an administrative center devoted to law, and King Henry VIII was the last monarch to live at the Palace of Westminster. In the 20th century, monarchs began laying in state at Westminster Hall, the oldest remaining part of the palace, dating from the 11th century. The Queen herself will undoubtedly do the same when it's time for the nation and the world to mourn her. The Queen visits the palace every May for the state opening of Parliament. The formal and elaborate occasion is just one of the many ways the Queen carries out her duties as monarch and head of state. Across the street from the Houses of Parliament, Westminster Abbey is where the Queen was crowned on June 2, 1953. So, uh, so we just left Westminster Abbey. Yeah. I couldn't imagine not going in with the tour guide. No, not at all. It's like going in any other place. Where you go inside and you just stone. And what were some of the coolest things that you like learned with Alex? I think the fact that there's 3,000 people buried inside and that every single sovereign was crowned there. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Sovereign is a one of the many terms the British have for the royal family. Fun fact, okay, they asked Winston Churchill if he wanted to be buried in the Westminster Abbey. And he, his apparent response, according to our guide Alex, was that uh, he didn't want to be buried there because he didn't think he would get along with the other chaps inside the building. Yeah. So that was very that was British. Cool. Interessante, you know? Interessante. While the Abbey is the final resting place to so many kings and queens of England and illustrious British subjects, it has been host to many happy occasions like family weddings. Consecutive generations, including the Queen herself, have been married here. Most recently, His Royal Highness Prince William married Catherine Middleton in 2011. Between the significance to the country, history, and architectural style, Westminster Abbey is a must-see in London. Visiting can be intimidating if you haven't studied up. The interior is a visual feast of 13th century Gothic architecture, and the abbey is jam-packed with tombs and monuments. Inside the abbey, visitors can see the coronation chair and the exact spot where the queen was crowned 70 years ago. Do yourself a favor and get yourself a guide and jump on a tour to better understand which King Henry did what or the pantheon of Britons either buried inside or thoughtfully memorialized. Kensington Palace For a generation of people, we know Kensington Palace as the place where Princess Diana lived and where the world mourned her. But the story of this royal palace is much more profound with a long history. While the Queen doesn't live at Kensington, it still has royal connections and is the London residence of His Royal Highness Prince William, the Duke of Cambridge, and his family. In the late 17th century, when King William and Queen Mary took over the throne, they preferred the countryside to the damp city center of London. They asked Christopher Wren himself, the architect to St. Paul's Cathedral, to transform this existing small country house into a palace fit for royalty. Kensington Palace has been a formidable royal residence since. Visitors can tour the palace and walk around the beautiful gardens. One of the best ways to enjoy the palace is to have afternoon tea in the orangery built by Queen Anne in 1704. So you can't go to London without having afternoon tea, and me and Brandon are here having afternoon tea. Cheerio. Cheerio. Oh, that means goodbye. Very nice. Very nice. Well, I get into it. You have to get into it. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you have to feel it. It's like a fine wine. Nice. How's the crumpet? So nice. Egg salad sandwich? Yeah, this is the best egg salad ever in my life. Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace is one of the most mega famous buildings in the world. It's the official London residence of the Queen and has been the residence of the monarch since 1837. 
It's hard not to think of London or the Queen without Buckingham Palace, as it's been the backdrop to significant events in the 20th century. It's also the British monarch's headquarters since the palace is a working one with many offices. The palace hosts a variety of banquets, receptions, and state events throughout the year. The palace is in the center of London, and if you're visiting, you can't miss it. The massive white Queen Victoria Memorial is right out front, and a wide boulevard called Pell Mell extends all the way to Trafalgar Square, intersecting with Whitehall. On one side of the Mall is the picturesque St. James's Park, across from the Tudor era St. James's Palace and various other royal residences. The Duke of Buckingham purchased the house shortly after it was built in the 1630s. Then King George III acquired the house in 1761, shortly after his marriage. Eventually, Buckingham Palace was transformed into a palace by his son King George IV after hiring architect John Nash to expand and remodel. The king wanted to rival the European palaces on the continent and turn Buckingham House into a show palace. Originally, the palace had a three-sided open courtyard with a triumphant Roman-style arch. Decades later, his niece, Queen Victoria, eventually built the fourth wing across the front and facade. The stone facade and famous balcony we know today are new compared to other parts of the palace, as it was built in 1913 by Queen Elizabeth's grandfather. That's right, King George V. The Queen and the royal family gather here for important national events and celebrations, so it's no doubt they will make an appearance on the balcony for the Platinum Jubilee. If you can't make it to the Jubilee, but still want a hit of that traditional British ceremonial pomp, you can catch the changing of the guard, which happens in the forecourt of Buckingham Palace. Elite soldiers are accompanied by a military band, and this ceremony has been happening since 1689. The whole thing is free and takes place every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 11 a.m. If you like music, history, or just a good parade, then definitely schedule it into your travel plans. And be sure to get there early because getting the best spot to see everything can be challenging. So I've made it easy for you and if you'd like to know where I like to stand or the best viewpoint, check out the details in the description below. If crowds aren't your thing, but still want some of that British royal grandeur, head to Horse Guards Parade to see the changing of the Queen's lifeguard. This lesser known mounted cavalry ceremony is one of a kind and less packed than the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. This ceremony happens every day at 11 a.m. and 10 a.m. on Sundays. Those are the royal palaces you should prioritize for your time in London whether you're taking part in the Jubilee celebrations or just visiting the city. The Queen's royal palaces are unrivaled worldwide due to their long tradition, priceless artifacts, and often are the focal point of British heritage. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so you can see our next video. I'm Angel Castellanos for The Tour Guy, and I'll see you in London. Cheers. We just left, we just left West. So we just left, don't laugh at me. <laughs> We're gonna go meet up with our guide, Alex, who's gonna bring context and, and open up this church for us like a, like a spring blossom.